We are recording. Okay, so we we are very spooky. <laughs> Hello. Ooh. But maybe that's appropriate. Yeah. I don't know, but I'm still. We're trying to work on lighting solutions. <laughs> I, we were just playing with my. Um, excuse me. It's it's a bit bright. You see, it's a four four beam. Beam. And it kind of does sort of help, but then it just falls over. Mm. It's sort of. We'll, we'll, we'll put it there until it falls over. Oh, that's so good. Um, so, do you want to start us off and tell the lovely people at home what we just saw? We just saw <laughs> ghost stories. <laughs> Ooh, and it's not October the 31st. No. Um, like, unless you're watching this on October the 31st. Hi. I'm going to stop doing this now. <laughs> uh, yeah, hi as well for everyone. Um, <clears throat> <clears throat> quick note to pass to me. Hi, you enjoyed it. It was good. <laughs> <laughs> Past me's down there, and, and future me's up here. Hi! <laughs> <laughs> it's in the timeline. Okay, yeah, 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 I like it. Yeah, I, I did get it. I did get it. I was, I was momentarily confused, but I did get Although it. Although I'm a bit confused because um, whilst I was looking at some pages on YouTube, they went in grid, not list. No. Um, but I have recently cached my cookies. I'll talk about that later. It's like, I'll have to clear my cache. We'll talk about cookies later. I'll talk about cookies later. Got my Buffy t shirt jumper on there. Um, so, ghost stories, British horror, st spooky movie um, show, program, mm. film. Film, movie. I liked it! Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. This is going to be a hard one to sort of talk about and describe. Um, yeah, with no spoilers. <laughs> How is this possible? I mean, okay, the, the, the basic structure is we meet this character who's kind of like um, Professor Goodman. Professor Goodman, yeah, yeah. Is, right, and, um, He's kind of presents as a um, you know a, a skeptic because hmm. um, we kind of open with um, was it was it supposed to be his bar mitzvah or just a bar mitzvah? I think it was his. Yeah, so he's a bit he goes bit bar mitzvah. His sister's a bit of a goth, um, kind of crazy. Um, she, she seems cool, um, and her their dad is quite orthodox, and of course she ends up dating a. Um, a man of Asian persuasion, um, you know, sort of, I guess implied that to be Muslim. Yeah. They don't actually have any dialogue, this is all told like when he's sort of filming it, sort of Sydney film style, like, you know. Um, so that's kind of how we're introduced to him, and so you, it, it initially sets up like he, he's a skeptic doing these, you know, exposing shows as a scene where he um, exposes a stage psychic. Mm. And then he gets to meet his hero, Played by Martin Freeman in very good age makeup, mm. Charles Charles Chapman. Yes. Yeah. Um, and then he basically says, "Here, solve these three cases." Mm. And that's kind of the basic. That's thought. the basic kind of setup, and you, you you go into these three individual stories, mm. yeah. which are all very good, and we'll talk about those separately. Um, well, we, we can talk about them very quickly without spoilers, just to give the basic premise, which is. Mm. Um, Paul Whitehouse is a night watchman in a fuck off never going in this spooky building. <laughs> yes. Stop walking around. We'll talk about that, but stop walking around. Um, Alex Law. Alex Lawther. Lawther. Um, with an amazing, I hadn't seen him in, um, in anything before. Apparently he's in Black Mirror. I do have a DVD, but I haven't watched it yet. Um, doing a brilliant twitchy performance mm. as this young man telling his story, which, where basically he got um, stranded in the woods mm. and had um a spooky time because it was night and An scary stuff. Yeah. And then young Martin Freeman is a different character. Um, Mike Priddle? Priddle. Priddle. Mike Priddle. Um, who, so it's um, Tony Chap, Tony Matthews is Paul Whitehouse, Simon, something, Prickin, Kind? Uh, Rifkin. 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 Rifkin, and then um, Martin Freeman is Mike Priddle. And he, his story is basically um, of a well, self-made man living in a lovely house in the country. It's very nice. Very nice. Very nice. And um, basically, uh, his, we're telling the story about his wife, and you know, who was pregnant late in life, and what happened there. Hmm. Uh, so that's the, the the basic structure of the um, the stories, and then obviously what happens after those those stories and scenes are, are, are told. So what were your thoughts without getting to the 
<laughs> well, I mean, obviously we both saw the trailer. Mm -hmm. We both thought, that looks interesting. Mm, that looks good. Because the original trailer was just a teaser trailer. It was like, mm. you know, acting you know, weird shit happens, ghost stories. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, the, um, uh, what's his name? <laughs> Professor Goodman holding up the, the signs. Mm. Yeah. The brain sees what it wants to see. And it was just very unsettling. Mm. Very, very creepy. But I thought, oh, that's good. Yeah, we both were like, oh, that's different. Yeah. Isn't you? Yeah, but British I like, horror. I like to support British movies yeah. and... British horror especially is always going to be a bit, you know, up killed compared to American horror. Yeah, of course, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, overall, I, I, I really liked it. Really good. Um, um, can you can you say a favourite sequence without spoiling? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is the answer. Um, I can, I can talk. <clears throat> well, I, I think I can say without being too spoilery that. The first two, the, especially the um, White House story, felt like a computer game. Oh, right, okay. Because um, I play a lot of Seek and Find, or even like kind of like Bioshock. Hmm. Um, so the Seek and Finds I tend to play are um, the Mystery uh, mystery Case Files. And a few of those are either set in a spooky house, or actually in a sanatorium, or somewhere like you know, an old hospital. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. And then obviously there's there's you, you, a spooky wood level, those types of <laughs> games. Bioshock is obviously an FPS, um, but again, it's the kind of walking around. Mm. Yeah, no, I get what you mean. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Um, oh, interesting. Yeah, um, I can't, I can't think. Okay, to be fair, I don't think I necessarily have a favourite sequence, but mm. they're all they all had their own feel to them. Yeah, and they all obviously brought the story together very nicely. The yes. conclusion brought the conclusion. Yeah, that was um <laughs> that was a humdinger. Oh uh, so short version we recommend it. <clears throat> Please go and see this film. Yeah, it's a full British cinema. It's very good. It is very good. Uh and yeah obviously all, all the performances are good um of small cast. Mm. Which that's fair enough. Mm. But it worked. And apparently based on a set of plays. Yeah I did not know that. Um mm. Because wasn't one of the co-writers the main guy? Don't... Andy Nyman, yeah. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, um, yeah, good. Go go check it out. Um, I don't know how long it's been out here. It's been out here a few weeks now. I, so, yeah. I don't know if it's hit the rest of the world yet. Okay. And I don't have. A, I don't think I've seen many reviews of it. So we might be the yeah, <laughs> just the just by default of the, <laughs> the only ones talking about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, short version. Um, good spooky fight. It's a fifteen. Mm. So you don't have to worry too much about if it's, you know, I wouldn't necessarily recommend bringing the kids. No, please don't. <laughs> I mean, a 15 year old, I would say... It depends on the 15 year old. Kind of, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, if they've literally just turned 15, um, yeah. think about it. <laughs> yeah. If they've already kind of been introduced to kind of some spooky stories or, you know, something. Um, there's very little blood and guts if that's what you're worried yeah, about. Yeah, there's no, there's no gore. It's more. It's, a bit it's definitely jumpy, isn't it? A bit, some jump, not there, but definitely some jumps. <laughs> um, but otherwise, yeah. I mean, it is a 15. There is a, um, a lot of f bombs, especially um, Paul Whitehouse, because Paul Whitehouse is not swearing. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, if you if you think your 15 year old's mature enough to handle it, I'm not saying that they. Uh, you know, they can't. I mean, it's a 15 for a reason. Yeah. But it's like a... I, w I wouldn't... I guess it... Just because it's a 15, don't think you're necessarily... Oh, I'm 15, I can go see it. If, yeah. if, if it's... If, you, if you're easily shit up by stuff, then... <laughs> you know. Wait till you're 18. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's it's 15 mostly for atmosphere and language, I'd say. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Definitely not a PG. I mean, I think because... There's no, there's no sea bomb, and there's no blood and guts. No. Very little actual violence as well. Yeah, no. That so that's probably what's keeping the rating down. Yeah, I think so. But it still tends to shit, so you know. Yes. Yeah, yeah. We recommend it, but approach with caution. Yeah, yeah. Good advice. Good advice. Yeah, you agree? Okay. We would. Uh, right now, now we, now we can. We can go. Spoilers! Because <laughs> this movie had jump scares. <laughs> Holy. Crap that this movie was oh, no, There was on. one right, there's a music jump oh, scare right, singer right titles. at the bloody beginning. I know! <laughs> Bastards. <sighs> um, yeah, I lost count. Well, I didn't count. <laughs> <laughs> at, least about, at least about half a dozen. Yeah, God. So, oh. Okay. 
<laughs> so I don't know if you thought this, yeah. but what I thought was a framing device wasn't a framing device. Okay. By that I mean, so we're introduced to Chapman and Goodman, or well, Goodman first and then Chapman afterwards. Yes. He gives them the stories to go investigate these, mm. and you kind of think, oh, okay, he's you were introduced to this character, and then we get the top close out with his conclusions or whatever, and he could like top and tail it. Mm. That's not what happens. <laughs> no, no, definitely not. One the framing those... device is not the framing device. I mean, yeah. it is. It's still Goodman's story. Yeah, but one of those people didn't actually exist. <laughs> it turns out. <laughs> or they did. Or it's, yeah. Or it was... maybe they did in some. You know, <sighs> yeah. Yeah. But in this occasion, definitely not. So, well, probably the Russian guy didn't exist. No. That's <laughs> <laughs> <Bless> him. <laughs> So the first story, um, we meet um, Paul Myers, um, Tony Matthews in a pub called The Tenth Number. Mm -hmm. And I cottoned on quite, I don't know if you did or not, I cottoned quite on, on quite quickly, certainly number 79. Yeah, there was a lot of 79s, I noticed a lot of 79s, yeah. Um, there were probably a few of the other numbers, but I, I guess I cottoned on 79 because it's not a date, it's not mm. clock, it's not... Did you know... Did you notice the 79, the, you know, the bar mitzvah film at the beginning, mm. the date on the little board was, oh, yeah, it was, it like, was 29th of June 1979, ah. that was the first one I noticed, yeah. Ah. And then when all the other ones started coming up, I, thought, I mean, oh, I probably did, I probably noticed the year but didn't notice yeah. the year because, like, oh yeah, this is the, when, the, when the party happened. Yeah, yeah. Um, but then definitely when it came to um, Old Martin's house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, okay, there's a lot of... And then when he, when he went past the, um, the the sign on the pub wall. Yeah. I was like, that's, okay, that's significant. Yeah, <laughs> start remembering that number. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we meet him, it's a fairly typical Paul Whitehouse. I mean, a good uh, good performance from him. Mm. Like, I saw him previously, like, I hadn't seen a lot of his acting, but, like, the last thing I saw him sort of acting in was um, Random and Hot Cook, and he wasn't that good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he was very much, you know, <laughs> trying too hard. Mm. He is definitely up to his game. Mm, yeah. Way good. He was very good. But a lot of effing and jeffing. Yeah. Which is fair <laughs> enough. And to be fair, in the situation he was in, I will do Yeah, no, yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe more. <laughs> more so. So yeah. basically what I was saying about feeling like a um, first person shooter, like a, a first person horror. Yeah. Or or um even like one of the um spookier levels on a seek and find game. Mm. I think, actually, I first kind of had that thought when we when we were first going to Old Martin's um, thing, where it's like, you there's crap everywhere, all over the, you know, in the in the um, on his table, his kitchen area, or whatever, mm. and it's like find the you know, find the coins, find the thing, you know, like yeah, you know, yeah, find yeah. all the different objects, because that is the sort of setup you'd have yeah, that's, yeah, that's in that kind of game. Yeah, you got to look through all of the mess to find the find sense of things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we meet Tony um, in a pub, yeah. sort of typical. I think the description they gave in the fast show was a bit way, a bit woo. <laughs> 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 oh, suit you, sir. Oh. Not that one. <laughs> no, not that one. A, bit, bit, a, bit, a bit of a likely lad kind of thing. Yeah. Um, he's talking about you know his late wife who um, died of cancer, unspecified cancer. Um, and he actually said, like, you know, if it had been today, they would have kicked it in the arse. Mm. Um, he confesses to have a daughter who isn't his wife's child, because what are you going to do? Um, and it, we don't know much about the daughter except she has locked-in syndrome. Mm -hmm. Which is relevant. Which is surprisingly relevant. <laughs> we'll you come to think, that. You think, well, actually, yeah, okay, fair enough. And then he started basically, he's telling his story. Which is how him being a night watchman at um, what he described as a uh, hundred years ago a woman's nut house. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you would call it a sanatorium or something. Um, an old asylum. Disused. And I've played those levels, and those levels are always the scariest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah I, I don't like that. <laughs> I don't like that. <laughs> I don't like those levels. <laughs> it's just um, is it Bioshock? One of those types of survival games, for FPS survival games, where you know, there is a creature. I don't know if it is. Probably another one is like 2K or Bethesda type games where it's um. You have to sort of sneak around, right. and there's one where there's um. 
this character that if you if he hears you he will scream at you. Oh god, okay. <laughs> don't like that. Yeah, no. I don't think it is um Bioshock because I don't think it's gender waterware. Unless it's I don't think that level was in um Anyway, that's gonna bug me. I don't think I've played I don't play many FPS games. Oh well. But anyway, so that's <laughs> Yeah, uh, so he's he's exploring, he's looking around, um, he's listening to the radio, sort of being sarcastic to it. Yeah, he, he's a night watchman, as he says to his colleague, you know, he's like, what do I do when I'm not working? He said, I don't care, read, well, listen to music, you know, yeah. learn English. Learn English. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because when you're not patrolling, you sit quietly, mm. keep, an, keep half an eye out, but... And then he goes to exploring, because someone keeps pulling the um, power, pulls yeah, out the generator. All the lights keep going out. And that just is a, that whole sequence is a whole lot of note because there's a downstairs bit. You look around. Yeah. There's a room that's initially locked up, and then it's not locked up. And you, yeah. you go. And then what are you doing? How much do you get paid? Surely you must think no. <laughs> I don't get paid enough for this. I'm sitting in my room. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, God. I mean, there was a cute detail where he had like a, um, a tin of cigarettes at the end of his run. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, that was that was nice. That was nice of the demon. To... No, I, I, I think it was just him because he only worked there for a few years. Oh yeah, that's true. So I think yeah. it might just been his. Like, the end of the his route. Yeah. <clears throat> quick fag and then back the other way. Yeah. yeah. Um. So thoughts um, on that before we get to the sort of the moment? That was. Yeah, I it had me on the edge. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's one point where he's. Um, there's like a bed or something that looks like a bed. Oh. And he's like, is there like yeah, a... What was all that about? And then he's like shining the light. Shining the light and it looks it's like... It's moving. A... It was moving. <laughs> and then he goes up to it and he obviously he's laughing because it's like a... A pile a of stuff. And, yeah. A mop and, and some oh. thing. And it's like, but it looked like an old lady sort of sat there. Yeah, oh my God, rocking. Oh, <laughs> don't. Yeah, so there was that. And then... Um, he goes into the... He goes where he's going down the steps. And this is what I was saying. Why are you going down the steps? Oh yes, this dis disused mental asylum where people were probably murdered and tortured and everything. This weird noises going coming from down to be these fair, to his credit, basement. He did tell his colleague, "I'm going to, to check around." No, so he, he did. Yeah. So he did say, "I'll be about ten minutes." I know, but why would you go down into the dark basement? Why would you do that? <laughs> this is your job. Is, uh, but we're not yeah. when it's being noisy. You lock yourself in your office and say, "Back up." Yeah, now. Exactly. You said there are noises where there shouldn't be noises. <laughs> it's disused. Anyway, yes. So he goes down into what is like the cell block. I guess so. Like it says, um, correctional unit or something. Yeah. Correctional ward was it? Yeah. Something, yeah. Something like that. All we know for certain is he's not in building three. No, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Along with the blue door. Um, so yeah, he goes down uh, and there's obviously like the the room that was hallway, heavily padlocked. Yeah, uh. The hallway with like the individual little light bulbs. Oh. Leading along it, and that's where he has the fags at the end. And there's like he um, turns and no like, child, no. Yeah, and he and shines the torch. The yellow dress girl. Maybe there's there. Oh, there's not there. So he again goes into the room which was locked, but then and then the padlock sort of slid off. And then the door opens to this whatever this was, and he goes in the room. <laughs> as no. if it's not stupid enough as it is, he goes. He, he, opens, going he does leave the door room. open. He switches the light on. He sort of stays to walk near the door to, and then he's like going yeah, around mannequin, yeah. mannequin, mannequin, mannequin. Oh, yeah, yeah, there's mannequins all around the room. <laughs> <laughs> like, why? But then again, something in a blanket. Yeah, something in a blanket that the arm moves. And he's like, oh, I've got you now, you bastard. <laughs> and he's got a hammer, so he's got something. Yeah, and he puts yeah. his torch down, hmm. pulls and it off, and then. And then, oh, and then, okay, and then. And it's and just then another mannequin that his arm just dropped down. In, now I'm thinking about it, hmm. a significant outfit. Oh, the mannequin. Oh, yes, of course. Yeah, I did, yeah, I didn't even think of that. I know, I just thought of it now. Yeah, 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 no. Anyway, so yeah, and yeah, then, yeah. then he's like, door slam, lights off, and we're like, fuck that. Yeah. The torch is going, and then. Oh, yeah, when the torch is sort of flickering on and off, and, and then, you just see and, him in the room banging the torch. And then the nope. <laughs> and then this. <laughs> this girl's face, oh my god. She's all like dead. Yeah, it's just. Zombie. Young, Good makeup. Young girl. Yeah, very impressive. Um, yeah, and kudos young. to the to the girl, because, mm. I mean, makeup like that's hard enough for an adult. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, so it's this sort of young girl in like. Because even if it was just a basic mask, they still would have had to apply the, you know. Yeah, it would have taken time. Yeah, that was, so, that was, that was good. So um, either that's a small person, very skinny small person, or an actual child. Yeah. And if it's a child, fair play. Yeah, fair play, to it, yeah. 
And then and, uh, oh, and obviously she's picked up the dead bird. Did you notice that? That the dead bird was yeah, gone. Yeah, I noticed the dead the bird was gone. Time. And it was like, ugh, what? Some goss. What's happened to it? What now? <laughs> yeah, and she sort of picks up. She's got the dead bird and she's like, her feet are like this and she's creeping forward towards Paul Whitehouse. Oh, and he's, he's going, Daddy? Okay, okay. And, and then, then she, hugs him. And then creeps her hand up. <laughs> yeah, oh, and like and this. <laughs> and he's just going, oh. Smash cut to a church where he's talking to um, oh, Tony's too. preacher. Yeah. And, and the preacher's just like, you know, it, it brought him back to the church, basically. You know, mm. he didn't want to talk specifically about, you know, Tony Paul Whitehouse's character. Yeah, but, um, confidentiality and all that. But, you know, he's like, you know, if it brought him back to thing, then what's wrong with having that kind of spirituality? Mm. So that that was probably was the hell nope 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 spookiest <laughs> nope. I think so. <coughs> in fact, in you terms, said you said nope. <laughs> yeah, I mean, in terms of tension, in terms of <laughs> atmosphere, mm. I mean, they all had their own mood and atmosphere, but that one was probably yeah. the. And that that sort of went. I don't know how long that the scene was, but it felt like ages. <laughs> no. It was very very tense. Very well done. Very tense. I was like, I hate those levels. No, yeah. next. Um, and uh, yeah, and then the preacher said that he actually went to see his daughter, didn't he? Yeah. After, after, that, was, heart heart. that was nice. Well, not that nice because yeah. well, well, we know what happens. Yeah. But yeah. So then we we um we meet young Simon. Simon Rifkind. Who I is? Love him. <laughs> He's adorable. adorable. Again, very good performance. Very mm. very twitchy performance. Yeah. Um, so, so he goes to um, Goodman so he, goes to his house, isn't he? So he'd be what? Because um, he was. In the story, he would have been not much more than 21 because he was going into university, but you know, it was supposed to be at university. Yeah, and his perfect brother was 25. Yeah, married yeah. in his own flat and all yeah. that. Um, so, yeah, basically, this young man doesn't get on with his family. He's got a lot of issues before he has his encounter. Yeah, God, as if he wasn't messed up enough. Oh, and the bit obviously, so he leads him up to his room where mm. he's going to tell him all about the encounter. Yeah, yeah. And when you hear the in the kitchen, God, yeah. that's fucking terrifying. Pardon my French. That. I bet <laughs> you, you just do your thing. The, yeah. the back of the woman, he's like, Mum, washing up the dishes. And she's just standing there. And then he sort of creeps a little bit further around, and then there's a man just standing there. Oh my god! <laughs> Did you get a get out vibe from that? <laughs> a little bit, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just the sort of static figures. Oh. And then he goes to walk up the stairs and the door just slams. And he sees this picture with some dust on it and there's like a person in the corner mm. with a duffel jacket. Which I didn't get, but I don't think you were meant to get it at that point. No. But it made sense. Yeah. Um, and then as they're going up, because there's like a, a three floor mm. house, so yeah. Simon goes into his room and he doesn't know where he is. Mm. So he's like calling out and he goes up what he thinks to the next level because he thinks he might be in that room and you see like someone walk past like with medical. Mm you know, thing like surgery gown and that. Mm. And it's like, oh, I'm in here. <laughs> and yeah, so he's rooms really hot, he's got... Yeah, I, I like it, it's just, kind of, it's comfortable. So his, his wall <laughs> is plastered with devilry, you know, pan... Demons? Yeah. Demons? Someone has demons! Like spooky trees, all that kind of yeah. stuff. And it's like, what do you want to do when you, what do you want to do when you don't look at one of the few laughs in the film? <laughs> what so do you don't want to look at it? Yeah, I, I look over here, yeah. there's a picture of so you yeah. <laughs> Yeah, these are all the things that I, I like. I just like them. I just like looking at them, and when I don't want to look at them, I look over there. <laughs> it's sweet. It's sweet. Oh, that that did get that did get a giggle out yeah. of most of the. I mean, there was about a dozen people there. Yeah, yeah. Well, that got a giggle. <laughs> that was very, that was very good. I wasn't <laughs> expecting that. that was... <laughs> um, I think I his story was the simplest. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it sort of was over quite quickly, wasn't it? Um, so basically, he says he confesses that he failed his driving test. He was driving his dad's car without a license, um, which doesn't necessarily make him a bad driver. Maybe he just had a bad test day. Yeah, yeah. Because um, he, he was driving constantly, as far as I could tell. He seemed to be doing all right. Um, and then he he's talking to his parents. His parents, because he's late back from where he was. He was at some party, wasn't he? His parents keep calling in. Like, where are you? Man? It's like I'm, do I'm on my way back. It was fine. Like stop calling him when he's in the car. Yeah, yeah. yeah and then he, well, the signal drops out because he's yeah, obviously then, in this then, wood. And then they call him back because oh, you hung up. No, he hung up on you. Yeah. And then because he's half distracted, I mean, he, he's trying to make the effort to keep his eye on the road. Yeah. But his parents are stressing him out, and then bosh. So initially, goes over. so initially you think deer. Yeah. Some yeah. kind of because you Some see sort of off, you see a flash of white and you could be like an albino deer or in the something. Of a forest, it could and be. he's like gets out of the car and he's like you know sort of scooping hello you're right and you <laughs> see it's like a white satyr. Yeah. 
Yeah, that sort of overhead shot with the, the chilling orchestral yeah. music. That was that was really that was yeah. Cool. He's like, oh, okay, no. Nope. He's like driving off, and obviously he's like shook up by this. Mm. And he like and you got that great <laughs> close up on his face where he's doing it. He's, yeah. he's got that amazing emotion in his face. That's mm. great. Well, then um, so he okay, eventually the car kind of dead, dead. Mm, yeah. He called. He manages to get a signal to call the um, <laughs> fucking O2. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. He, um, Gets a signal. He calls the um, uh, breakdown breakdown people. people. And they, they they can find him on GPS. So they know yeah, where he is. Yeah. I was like, oh well, we'll be right there, Mister. <laughs> yeah. Mister. Rich Rifkind. Kind. <laughs> Rifkin, thank you. Okay. All right. Okay. So he sort of gets back in the car yeah, and then puts his blanket over. Him. So he, he, he's suitably and understandably shit up and nervous and you know kind of like there's a lot going on there. And at one point, something gets in the car with him. Mm. Oh yeah, he sees the thing on the dial, yeah. back door open. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and this thing just crawls in. It's like, <laughs> uh, like one, again, one of the best funny moments um, was like, <laughs> um, don't move, I'll stay there. Yeah, stay, uh, and he puts his hands over. Yeah, and he's like, fuck that! <laughs> bolts out of the car! Yeah, yeah, appropriate reaction. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah. bolts out of the car, bolts into the woods. Mm. Oh, um, and he bumps into this massive tree. Which is a very knobbly, weird tree. Mm, it was like branches. <coughs> and, <you> know. <clears throat> which then attacks him, and that's the kind of end of that sequence. Grabs his head, doesn't it? And then he's screaming, and, and that's like, it. Ah. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I guess obviously he's okay, because he lived to tell the story, but... Hmm. I think, was it, it must have been the next day, <sighs> um, then Professor Goodman goes... Well, the next day after talking to him, I assume. Yeah, yeah. Professor Goodman then goes to that same area to have a look at the tree, and he's recording on his thing, saying... Um, Charles, this is you know, ridiculous. Thing. Yeah, and he sees like the tree that's been felled, and he hears some strange noises, and he walks back to his car. But yeah, strange noises in the woodland isn't necessarily yeah, a bad thing. No, yeah, exactly. Like, or an unusual thing. No. Good fade out from like the wood, woods at night to the woods in the daytime. Mm, so yeah, like it was that. not like a fade, but it was like it progressively gets lighter, and that was kind of cool. Mm. Really changed the mood of the trees, you know. Yeah. Oh, I enjoyed um, that. And he walks back to his car afterwards and he has obviously this this ghostly vision of, of himself, of Goodman, in the, like the <laughs> hospital. Well, just looking like death, basically. Just, yeah, looking really, really... And know, then, like, puts his hand up on the window. And he goes to open the door. What was that? And he's gone. He's Which is quite good, again, quite good, good yeah, swipe good at the Yeah, I like that. Um, yeah, that's, that was... <laughs> Rifkin. Yeah, and then we've got Mr. Priddle. Yeah, Mike who, Who's young Freeman. <laughs> um, who's very kind of, I wouldn't say completely awfully awfully, but he's sort of, I guess is it implied he's a self-made man? I think so, yeah. He worked in the city. And now he's doing like, he's dressed like the typical country. <laughs> yes, country bumpkin. Not, not, not bumpkin, um, country like landed, like a gentry. Yeah, that's sort of like, oh yes, I own all of this sort of thing. And so he's sort of outdoors and he's um, mm. talking to him, telling his story, stopping every five minutes to play with his phone because he mm. keeps getting messages. Sorry, I would say this. Mm. Um, certain, basically, certain story about how his wife wouldn't didn't want children until she got the big deal. Got work. the big yeah, got the partnership, and yeah. then she got the partnership. She was pushing forty, and then you know because there was problems. Because try and the Gobi Desert down there, <laughs> which is like um, that's kind of your fault as well. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> Pays for attention. You know, you're not. Yeah. I mean, I guess the implication was that maybe her ovaries were. I mean, nearly forty is nothing. I am forty, and you know, I'm assuming well, without getting too detailed into it, <laughs> I'm still menstruating, mm. and that. Suggests everything's still normal where it should be. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So, but then again, maybe is, is the implication that her ovaries, there's something wrong with her ovaries, or further south? Yeah, that's a good point, yeah. But anyway. One leads to the other. Anyway. Uh, so, basically, IVF, yeah. falls pregnant, mm. complications with the pregnancy, so she's in hospital. Yes. And which is where we kind of get the meat of his sequences, which basically. It, Martin Freeman totally fucking bringing it with that one man performance. Yeah, criminal. Absolutely criminal. Like I said, this house is stunning. It's oh. it's it's the definition of modern house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With yeah. modern art, with our way open plan, glass everywhere. Yeah. Um, quite a good sequence where he's in the, the baby's potential room. Um, there's a yellow dress doll in the crib. Yeah. And then um, so the diapers, the nappies. Um, fly out, mm. 
And he very logically goes to the window. He, he does. He checks all the windows, makes sure because mm. it's huge um, bay windows, mm. like big, big, big thing. The, the baby has an amazing view. Mm. Um, and there's no draft. He confirms that there's no draft coming from anywhere. And then he's looking at the changing table, and then all the the cotton <laughs> buds and, and towels and all that. So they all kind of. So he thinks poltergeist. He says, "Those are poltergeist. Oh, you've met evil." So they kind of cut back to the interview for a little bit, and he's like pushing him for a bit more information. So okay, yeah, so he had to stay overnight. The scan was like, "What with the scan?" They wouldn't show us, but anyway. Um. So yeah, it goes back to sort of the night. Hmm. No, uh, that must have been the night when he got the call. Yeah. Which is what he said. Didn't he? So Marie, his wife, was like. Again, so this is now the night time because the, the earlier sequence in the house was the daytime. This is the night time in the house. Mm. And you go walking around, spooky shit's kind of happening. Which, you know, you, you're worried about your misses. It's you know, you're going to be yeah, things are going to be happening. Yeah. You know, fixing yeah. the tap and and then he goes back into the room and there's like a a whole lot of nope again. Yeah. <laughs> well, so um, yeah, what was it that it was the was it the jingling of the um... yeah? So you got the jingling of the wind, the baby mobile thing. Yeah, mobile. At this point, the the curtains are closed, so you got heavy curtains mm. in a room where you've already established there's no draft. Yeah, something's happening. And things move. The things are moving. The, yeah. the doll's not in the bed. There's the yeah. blanket rises up, and it's like Ugh. oh yeah, that was that. Oh. <laughs> and there's like a woman <laughs> in the thing. Mm. Oh, that's right, something falls on the ground. Oh, the, the oh. petals from the flower. Yeah, the, the, flower. the temperature drops. And the temperature drops on the little baby snorers, and he just goes, Because <gasps> it's like dropped. It's so like, cold got... suddenly. It... Yeah, that was great. great. Oh. That was a great performance. And then, yeah, the petals drop, and you just see these two feet oh. just stood there, and then fucking hell. <laughs> I was like, whoosh! Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. but face. Yeah, just face. We are dead! Yeah, we are dead. Yeah, it's like, oh, God. And then, um, um, so yeah, he, uh, um, they come back to them in the country because at this point, um, young Freeman's sort of gotten his, um, because they walk in country, he goes to this, like, gun, well, what, what, a shack that turns out to be his gun cupboard. Yeah. He's sort of walking around with it. Um, oh yeah, because he sees the, um, Anorak guy in the, in the distance oh, again. Oh yeah, of course. Because oh, at one point, mine well. hands him, yeah, Priddle hands him the gun and mm. says, Hold this for a second, I've got to take this call. And he's, he's not, I mean, the gun's not, it's a shotgun, it's not loaded yet. He's holding it sort of down, so it's like, okay, here, yeah, fine. Yeah, um, the, the barrel's sort of broken, isn't it, as well, so it's not, like, live. And then, like, he's like, Ugh. he doesn't even, like, literally holster the gun up. He's just like, Ugh. Mm. And he's like, you've never killed anything, have you? Or at least not as you know. Yeah, and he went, oh, certainly not. He took, <sighs> he took exception to the fact yeah, that he yeah. suggested... Yeah, and that, that bit as well, yeah, where he's taking the, the call, the f call from China or something, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Oh, this Chinese thing I've got going on. Yeah. Um, and yeah, he sees uh, the hooded person in the distance on the, on the hill. Yeah, so and he's And he been... sort of like looks away and looks back and he's there. Yeah. <laughs> and he's still, oh. So they're walking around, he's, he's got this gun, he sort of puts a couple of shells on it, you know, is he just on a hunt? Is he mm. getting What's something? What's he doing with it? Yeah, it's just kind of... Because it, in a weird way, it feels kind of natural. You know, because he's got this whole like country, you know, yeah. entry. You can imagine he'd be out like shooting or something. Yeah. yeah. yeah well, and then that whole thing about why is it always the last um, key you try? Because why would you keep trying? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Of course, it's the last key. <laughs> it <laughs> it could was, be the first. It's the Evans sketch. You're always the last place you look. And, fuck, I found it, but fuck it, I'm gonna keep looking. <laughs> keep looking, yeah. <laughs> of course, it's the last place you look. <laughs> um, uh, what he said as well when he was when he was unlocking the gun cabinet on mm. the hill, where he said, um, oh, "What did he say? It's always." It's always the th uh, oh, something like the key, is the key to the yeah. oh it's always the last one that that brings the key to the story or something like yeah, that yeah 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 that brings the story to it's always the last key that brings the story together or something like that yeah and also did you notice there were numbers on the thing because I noticed there's seventy nine on the I didn't notice that no. on, on the inside of the door when he opened it there was oh, a yellow strip right. of paper oh oh yes no I did see that yeah, yeah. I didn't know there were numbers on it I saw yeah. the little strip yeah. got me looking up on seventy nine oh okay yeah yeah um mm. so yeah so that was that and then uh long story short um he shoots himself yeah like just dump yeah, in the head just out of nowhere yeah um, and then yes yeah, so, yeah, then so that made me jump 
And then Goodman panics. What happens after that? Goodman panics, runs away. Goes, goes back to Chapman. Oh, yeah, of course, yeah. And then, yeah, he's saying... That's when it gets fucking weird. That's just when it's like, okay, what is happening? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, he goes back to the caravan, whatever it is, 79 caravan. Um, yeah. Throws those things down and says, look, there's even a five-year-old could say that there's a logical explanation for all three of these Because there was a whole thing about, what you know... Um, your mind sees what it wants to see or something. Yeah, mm. yeah the, the brain sees what it wants to see. So, prior, previous to that, and I will... One thing I want a quick comment on. Uh, we know it's not... They're not hiding the fact that Martin Freeman's also the old guy. No. And I was thinking, with a small cast like this, when you've got a talent like Martin Freeman, uh, doubling up characters isn't necessarily an unusual thing. No. Um... <clears throat> But it turns out that's significant. It is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he pulls off his old man yeah, makeup. So, yeah, because he says, uh, I always say, um, things are not always as they seem, Professor. And, he, and then um, Goodman says, things are always as they seem. And he's about to leave. And he goes, are you sure about that? Yeah, he's got his Scottish accent. <laughs> yeah, are you sure about that? And he's like rubbing his eye. <laughs> pulls all the makeup he's off. He's pulling all this makeup off. Uh, whips his thing off and he's got this lovely suit underneath. <laughs> oh, very dashing. Very dapper, yeah. And like, he musses it. his hair and it, I'm yeah. guessing that was a reverse shot. I think so, yeah. Because his hair suddenly goes all smooth. Yeah, and... it did look a bit like it was, yeah. Oh, um, quick thing <clears> before. Because <throat> um, mm. basically, um, Priddle was like, um, the baby, his wife died, the baby tore her in two. Oh, yeah, Apparently, yeah. like, it was major birth defects, but hey, Monty, you know, we, we, nobody expects him to live, but life mm. finds a way. Bang! Yeah. yeah. So the baby lived. Mm. Baby Bertie, wasn't it? Monty. Monty? Bertie? Marty. I think it was. Bar oh, Barty. Of course it was. Yeah, Barty. Yeah, so that, yeah. So, I don't know So, yeah, basically. At one point when he was playing with his hair, I thought he was going to like form horns or something. Like, just, mm. like Martin Freeman's the devil. Mm. Uh, I don't know if he was supposed to be if he was still Chapman or he was supposed to be Priddle. We're just calling him Martin Freeman for now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also known as the other guys. Yeah. <clears throat> um, um, so he yeah, rips so, a hole in the in the yeah, thing. Yeah. That was that was clever. I liked how they, 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 yeah. they did that. Not as you see. And then suddenly Warehouse is like, so it's, don't worry, it's just me, you, Barty, and well, you know who. Mm -hmm. So they take he takes him to the thing, and then they're on the tr some train tracks. Good mm -hmm. fade out, actually, again, with the, mm -hmm. the, the wall in the warehouse with just the table and chairs, and then yeah. suddenly, like, you know, on the rail track. A bit worried about walking along the rail track, don't like that. Yeah. Every PSA I've ever watched as a child yeah. said, don't do that. Don't walk on the railways. Don't walk on the railways, kids. <sighs> and this is when it gets weird. Okay, so we get... I know we've stopped doing these play-by-play -play reviews, but this is the only way we can talk about yeah, these movies, doing a play-by-play yeah. review. So he's, um, he goes to... He's taken back to the place from his childhood, because he's a um, oh, yeah. Goodman's Jewish, and he, he does this, like a racist rhyme. He's like, you, you were at my school, how do you know, how do you know yeah. this? And basically gets him to relive an event from his childhood, which was... Him getting bullied by two kids from school, I keep calling it, Oi, Jew face, Jew face, come here, you! And then, I'm not going to the tunnel, I'm not going to the tunnel, you know, he tries to go away, so I've got to go home, and otherwise, you're my fat pig, mum and a pig, and I'll your dinner. Oh, like, horrible, oh, horrible bully children. Yeah. Like, they play this game where they're throwing, they've got glass bottles and they're throwing stones, and. Mm. Not cool. Anyway, so it turns out Anorak person is um, a kid from their school who presumably is on the spectrum. Yeah, yeah. They, they, call him, they call him. They call him Kojak because he's got like shaved head, or like, I don't know, maybe it's a brain injury there or something. Yeah, yeah. He's got his big overcoat and everything. Yeah. So they like, what are you playing? So, oh, come on, Kojak. You want to play the game? You want to join our gang? Mm -hmm. Got to go in the tunnel. Got to find the tenth number. Tenth number. <laughs> and like, you know, young Chapman, young Goodman, <clears throat> sorry, he's like, oh no, don't, don't. He's trying to stop. Um, what was his actual name? I can't remember. Dennis, I think was it. Something like that. Oh, well, that was, <coughs> well, for for, um, for ease of reference, we'll just keep calling it Kojak. And tries to stop him going in the tunnel. He said, Wait, you want to be a part of our gang? You go down the yeah. tunnel, find the numbers of chalk, so they give him a torch, and then remember the tenth number and you can be part of our gang. Yeah. Anyway, um, it turns out there isn't a tenth number. The tunnel gets narrower. He's, he starts having a kind of a panic attack. Mm. And. I really I thought he was seizing, but then they reference as, an asthma attack. An asthma attack, yeah. So maybe I don't know if it was both. Maybe. 
So the bully boys run away. When they realise that he's like stopped moving or yeah. stopped making any sounds. Um, Goodman um, does look down the t tunnel and tries to call out. He, he uses his proper name mm. to try and sort of check him. And because he's still a young man, it can be much more than 13, 14. No, no. And he pegs it as well. And then we kind of brings us back to the modern, modern day. Mm. And, and, and Martin's just like, well, you know, you, you let him. I, like, I didn't. Tell, I didn't tell him to go in the tunnel. I tried to stop him. I didn't tell him, you know, because he knew there was no tenth number. Yeah. I didn't. But no, you did nothing. Yeah, exactly. And basically, so the idea being that he's been carrying all this guilt his, his, his life, and that's why he's become a skept, professional skeptic, not to try and bring comfort to other people, but to be dismissive of the spiritual world. I don't know. Just. Yeah, um, but that isn't even the twist. No, no. <laughs> we're, not, we're not on that yet. <laughs> um, so suddenly, suddenly Crib <clears throat> and Martin picks up like baby Barty. Barty, yeah, and no, gives it some cat food first. <laughs> I didn't get that, but okay. I think that could be a reference to a razor head, oh, right. which is um, a very um, early, very strange um, David Lynch film. Oh, okay, I can get that, I can get on board with that. Um, um, yeah, so then, yeah, so he picks up baby Barty and then wanders off, off and then, like, um, <clears throat> Kojak comes along mm. and, you know, is, as you would expect, a body that hadn't been discovered for years. Because, mm. um, as Martin said, you didn't do it anyway, you didn't call anyone, you didn't. Because he said, oh, I was a kid, what was I supposed to do? To tell someone, bring it up at assembly, something. Yeah. Anyway, Kojak comes along and he's got. He looks like you'd expect a corpse to look. Mm, that makeup was good. It was. It's fucking creepy. Um, creepy, but very Because that, that tunnel was probably a bit wet. I don't know how well preserved the body would be, but you'd expect it to be yeah. 20 odd years, you know? Yeah. Or at least you'd ex how you'd expect it. Imagine a kid would imagine it to yeah, look. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then he pulls off his clothes and he's wearing a hospital gown. Mm. And you're like, oh no, not again. And then he gets again taken to a different place, and like, this is Kojak leading him through now. Mm, leading him through that really creepy hallway with yeah. the, the lovely theatre curtains at the end. And he's just sort of giving this maniacal laughter <laughs> and dragging him along. Very uh, eagle. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and he sort of opens the curtains and there's uh, a, a bed. bed. Uh, a bed, yeah. Which should give me a slightly Sherlock flashback. Yes, yeah. Because it was upright. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, and yeah, he sort of gets into the bed where he forces him, Kojak forces Goodman into the bed. And then and he then sort of lays on top of lays him. Lays on top of him and... Uh, puts his finger in his mouth, for yeah, when the child did. Yeah, yeah, and then it eventually, obviously the camera pans up and you see, you see him there, Kojak, with his finger in Goodman's mouth. And then uh, it cuts to... That fades and then... Fades like, into, like Goodman in his hospital <sighs> regalia, in, lying in the bed. And then... Simon walks in, who is mm. a, a, a junior doctor. A junior doctor, yeah. So good for him. Yeah, yeah good for him. Good for him. And it sounds like his parents are actually quite nice. Yeah. yeah, yeah at least on that occasion, anyway, because he was on the phone to them again, wasn't he? Or mum, or even mum. Yeah. Give love, um, give love, mm, give love you know. Yeah. Um, um, and then um, Dr. Priddle walks in. Yeah. Um, oh, all his phone, obviously. Yeah, with his little, little text alert, yeah. And um, it basically turns out that Goodman is um, had attempted suicide. And he, you know, as young Simon says, um, coma, possibly lock-in. So he was a lock-in patient. Yeah, yeah. And then, obviously, as these things do, um, Paul Whitehouse walks in as the janitor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he's, uh, yeah, he's whistling something, isn't he? He's whistling yeah, the, the he's whistling music. the song that he was listening to <laughs> earlier in the, episode, yeah. in the film. Uh, and then the radio's on in the background, the same radio that he was listening to in the asylum. Uh, the little yellow doll. <laughs> yeah. As well on the, on his. So um, it was all, it was all there. And then suddenly, like the last scene, because he, he moves the mirror so we can have a change of view. Yeah. And it's that window that you, that we, yeah. that we've been seeing all the way through. Um, yeah, and then the bird flies into it, <laughs> and then that's it. <laughs> so the whole thing took place in his head, in a thing, but mm. maybe that's still his guilt. Maybe it's still. Oh, one thing, yeah, I got the whole. Did you get about the finger? Thing? Yeah, yeah, because it was his um, the tube. tube in the mouth. Yeah. But looking at the time, I think we pretty much wrapped up. Much and, there, yeah. So yeah, we recommend it. Um, it's spooky. Awesome. <laughs> um, do you think you'll buy it? Watch it again? I don't know. I'd, I'd see it again. Yeah, I'd see it again. Um. But yeah, we're pushing for time now, so uh, I'll say thank you for watching. Go see it. Um, I've been Michelle. He's been Adam. 
you've been watching our review of ghost stories bye bye thank bye. you for watching thanks a lot subscribe